So ultimately in our body, our body is made up of a bunch of cells, trillions of them. And every cell has requirements of the things that it needs to have the proper building blocks to be healthy. So if you're unhealthy, unhealthy cells really can be simple as that. Seven main pieces to the cell, one of those being amino acids. So in this video, I'm gonna break down essential versus non-essential amino acids. We're also gonna talk about what is a complete protein and what is an incomplete protein and how those things all correlate to each other what are the cleanest sources? So if this is one of the main seven things to get in, we really need to understand and break this down. So as a kid or with my kids, they always play with building blocks. Well, amino acids are like the building blocks inside of your body, right? They are technically uh, responsible for building the proteins inside your system. They build hormones, they build neurotransmitters, uh, they repair bodily tissues, they help to grow bodily tissues, other bodily functions, they help to break down food. And even in some cases, amino acids can literally be transferred into an energy source. Also, have you ever wondered how your body produces new muscle after working out for several weeks or for several months? Because when you work out, especially with a weight, your muscle actually partially tears and your body fills in the gaps of those tears with new proteins derived from amino acids. So this is literally the building blocks are rebuilding, restructuring us when this kind of tissue damage happens or when new cells need to roll over. So your muscles are directly affected by how many amino acids you put in your body. So if you're looking to get more lean and have more definition and more muscle, which is gonna crank up the met metabolism more, I'm not talking about big and hulky. I'm just saying if you want to be more lean, then amino acids are extremely essential inside of your body. Some of them your body can make, other ones you have to eat. But in fact, there are three major categories. So they're the essential ones. These are the nine amino acids that your body can't make. You have to get them from food. And these are the ones that build key bodily tissues, including the organ cells and the skin cells through collagen formation because amino acids make up collagen. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Then there's non-essential amino acids. And these are the 11 that your body has the ability to create. They're used to support the growth and the repair of new tissue in the body, as well as help your body synthesize new red blood cells. In fact, without non-essential amino acids being produced in your body, your body wouldn't be able to produce new blood. They're also vital for the proper functioning of your immune system so that they can help you protect against diseases. They're involved with hormone synthesis, but your body can run low on these. That's why there's a third category called conditional amino acids. Now there are eight overlapping amino acids. I'm gonna spare you on naming all the names of these that your body can make, but if it's very stressed or if you are sick, your body won't have the raw materials to do this. And so they're kind of conditional in the fact that you might not be healthy enough to make these non-essential amino acids. So then you would have to get them from food. So those are the differences between non-essential, essential, and the category potentially of conditional amino acids. So now you know what these 20 building blocks do for your system and how critical they are, then how do we get them into our system? Well, if our body can make some of them, we just need to make sure we have a proper lifestyle but we can also add in clean, healthy sources of proteins, but not all proteins are built the same. There are complete proteins and there are incomplete proteins and neither of them is bad. It's just the difference between them is a complete protein provides all 20 of the amino acids or all of the essential amino acids, which there are nine of them. Now these are traditionally all your animal-based foods. Animal-based foods are gonna be complete proteins, including meat, dairy, eggs. They contain all the amino acids that your body cannot create itself. If you're gonna have meat protein, it's very crucial to eat it clean. That means we wanna make sure it is raised without hormones, it's avoided antibiotics, and it's done in a grass-fed for beef, free range for chicken, wild caught for fish manner, so that it is a clean meat. But this is one of the reasons why when I look at protein powders, I want as complete of a protein powder as I can get, but I tend to avoid dairy because I don't need extra lactose in the system. And a lot of times that dairy comes with some of the uncleanly things like antibiotics or hormones or not from a grass fed cow. Now, I tend to go the direction more often of collagen because collagen still comes from those animal sources. It is just shy of all the amino acids, 19 out of the 20 of them in the collagen, eight out of the nine essential amino acids. The only one missing is tryptophan. So 
Collagen itself is not complete protein. However, it provides 19 of the 20 of them, and it's a cleaner source because there's no dairy involved. That's my favorite type of animal type protein, which is traditionally containing most, if not all, of the amino acids. Then there's incomplete proteins. Incomplete proteins are traditionally your vegetable-based, whole grain, legume, seeds, nuts, spinach, broccoli, mushrooms. Those are all incomplete proteins. Incomplete makes it sound bad. It just doesn't provide all of the essential amino acids. So when it comes to vegetarian proteins, there are a couple that flip the bill though that are complete. Pea is my favorite. Pea is a complete protein. It gives you all of the essential amino acids. Soy, I don't love soy because it's genetically modified. Quinoa, buckwheat, algae, these are all complete. So my favorite bean pea or algae, okay. they're a low carbohydrate and then they don't contain the genetically modified uh, organisms like a lot of those others, grains and the soy contain. So those are my favorites. Now you kind of know the difference between complete and incomplete. How much do we take? Typically an adult body needs about a half a gram of protein per lean pound of body weight each day. So if you were just max this out and it's lean body weight, right? But if you were just go total weight, you could take your total weight divided by two and that would give you a, a top end amount of how much protein you would need. So if you weighed 200 pounds, it would give you 100 grams of protein. Divide that into three meals. You're looking at around 30 to 35 grams per meal, which would be on the upper end that I would normally recommend, recommend unless you're like a bodybuilder and you're really trying to bulk up. Now, lean body mass would, would have more forgiveness there. It would actually be a little bit lower. So a great target is somewhere between 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal is a good range to not overtax the kidneys, give your body the protein it needs, either in the complete or incomplete form, allow it to extract out the amino acids so it can build the muscle, build the organs, and do the building blocks inside the body. My favorite source is collagen because it doesn't spike insulin levels we don't want to sacrifice that you can get it from grass-fed cows so it means it doesn't have antibiotics it doesn't have the hormones and 60 to 70 percent of all the protein inside of your body is collagen and it depletes with age so we need to replenish this source so i did a video as a next step i think would be a great video to watch breaking down everything you need to know about collagen and i put it right here for you check it out